ವಸುದೇವಸುತ ಕಂಸಚಾಣುರಮರ್ದನ ದೇವಕೀ ಪರಮಂದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಂದೇ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ಟುಡೇ ಇಸ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ದಿ ಬರ್ತ್ ಡೇ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಸುಬೋಧಾನಂದ ಜಿ ವಿಚ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ಸ್ ದ ಪಿಕ್ಚರ್ ದೇರ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅವರ್ ಕಸ್ಟಮ್ ಟು ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವ್ ದಿ ಬರ್ತ್ ಡೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣಸ್ ಮೊನಾಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಡಿಸೈಪಲ್ಸ್ ದೇ ವರ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟೀನ್ ಡಿಸೈಪಲ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೊನಾಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಡಿಸೈಪಲ್ಸ್ ಹೂಮ್ ವಿ ಕಾಲ್ ದ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಡಿಸೈಪಲ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದೇರ್ ಬರ್ತ್ ಡೇಸ್ ಆರ್ ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಸುಬೋಧಾನಂದ ಜಿ ವಾಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದೆಮ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ದಿ ಯಂಗೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಲಾಟ್ ಸೊ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಖೋಕಾ ವಿಚ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಎ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಬಾಯ್ ಇನ್ ಬೆಂಗಾಲಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಬಾಯಿಶ್ ದೇರ್ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ವೀಡಿಯೋ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಮ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ರೇರ್ ಇನ್ ದೋಸ್ ಡೇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಯೂಟ್ಯೂಬ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಗೋ ಟು ಸರ್ಚ್ ಫಾರ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಶಿವಾನಂದ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಸುಬೋಧಾನಂದ ಇನ್ ಒನ್ ವೀಡಿಯೋ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಟೆನ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇ ಬೋತ್ ವಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಟುಗೆದರ್ ಫಾಲೋಡ್ ಬೈ ಅ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ಗ್ರೂಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಮೆರಿಕನ್ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಟ್ರಾವೆಲ್ಡ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಟು ಕ್ಯಾಲ್ಕಟಾ ಇನ್ ದೋಸ್ ಡೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟೀಸ್ ಲೇಟ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಮೂವಿ ಕ್ಯಾಮೆರಾ ದೇರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ದಟ್ ಪಿಕ್ಚರ್ ದಟ್ ವೀಡಿಯೋ ಆಫ್ ಫಿಲ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಟೆನ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸೋ ಸೈಲೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಇಸ್ ಮೂವಿಂಗ್ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ರಾದರ್ ಜರ್ಕಿಲಿ ಬಟ್ ದ ಪಿಕ್ಚರ್ ಇಸ್ ಕ್ವೈಟ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸುಬೋಧಾನ್ ಜಿ ಲುಕ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಹಿ ಈಸ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ಲಿ ವೆರಿ ಓಲ್ಡ್ ಬಟ್ ಹಿ ಲುಕ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಅ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಬಾಯ್ ದ ವೇ ಹೀಸ್ ಮೂವಿಂಗ್ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಗ್ರಿನಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬಿಸೈಡ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಶಿವಾನಂದ್ ಜಿ ಲುಕ್ಸ್ ಪಾಸಿಟಿವ್ಲಿ ಮೌಂಟೇನಸ್ ಹೀ ಇಸ್ ಟಾಲ್ ಟವರಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೀ ಇಸ್ ಸಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ರೇಡಿಯೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಅ ಮೌಂಟೇನ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೈಟ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸಿ ಇಫ್ ಯು ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಇಫ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಎನಿಬಡಿ ಸೀನ್ ದಟ್ ಪಿಕ್ಚರ್ ವೀಡಿಯೋ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೀನ್ ದ ವೀಡಿಯೋ ಯಸ್ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ಸೀ ಇಟ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಯೂಟ್ಯೂಬ್ ಗೋ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲುಕ್ ಫಾರ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಶಿವಾನಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಸುಬೋಧಾನಂದ ಬೆಲೂರ್ ಮಠ್ ಮೆನಿ ಮೆನಿ ಸ್ಟೋರೀಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಚೈಲ್ಡಿಶ್ನೆಸ್ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಚೈಲ್ಡಿಶ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ ಡಿಶ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗುಡ್ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಇಸ್ ಗುಡ್ ಸೊ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಫಾಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೀ ಒನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ವಿವೇಕಾನಂದ ವಾಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ವಿತ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೆಡ್ ಆಸ್ಕ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ a boon you know a boon if somebody like swami vivekananda says that and that means you will get it whatever you ask for and subodhan ji thought for a while and he said all right then bless me that i may never be deprived of my daily cup of tea <laughs> <laughs> and he never was and people asked him later in later life he said in the as in strangest circumstances in mountains and forests and nothing around but i did get tea somebody or the other would come <laughs> with a cup of tea for me <laughs> once the british they started a steamer service this was in the days of the british empire in calcutta a steamer service which went up and down the river the ganga the main monastery where subodhan ji lived was in belur on on the ganga and you could buy a season pass for the steamer so somebody bought him the pass and like a little kid he was so delighted he would get on the first boat and then all day long from morning to <laughs> evening he would sail up and down the river only getting down at the monastery during tea time <laughs> for a cup of tea and then he would quickly run to the boat and sail up and down and this went on for some time yeah is an incredibly uh, elevated spiritual soul once swami i've said this earlier also swami shraddhanand ji who was here in sacramento some of you might have seen it way before my time you have seen him you have seen him yes Swami Shraddhananda ji So this story comes from him when Swami Shraddhananda was a young monk in Belur Math Swami Subodhan ji was alive at that time and Swami Subodhananda had the habit of sitting on the veranda near Swami Vivekananda's room those who have been to Belur Math you'll remember there's a veranda facing the Ganga so he would sit there and read um
And then he went up and asked, bowed down to the Swami and asked him, what is it that you're reading? What are you seeing and why are you laughing? And then he said, look, I read here, a Vedanta book, what does it tell you? Brahman is real, the world is false, the world is an appearance. When I see, when I read, the world is an appearance, I look up and see. What you can see from there is the river and the city of Calcutta opposite, on the op opposite bank. Even now you can see that. So I just see mountains of ashes, just ashes, nothing. And I burst out laughing. And I look back and the book says, Brahma Satyam, Brahman is real. And I look up and I see it is all Sri Ramakrishna. <laughs> the same thing, the same reality. In one sense, it's the illusory ro snake. In the other sense, it's the rope. It's the gold, it's the ornament. It's the water, it's the wave, in that sense. By itself, it is empty. All this I'm explaining. He didn't explain anything. He says, I see up and I see Sri Ramakrishna everywhere. And I burst out laughing. Hmm. Uh, many interesting stories about him. The, the ashram where I joined the order, Deoghar Vidyapit, it's a school. And at the very beginning, it started in 1922. In fact, last year they celebrated 100 years. So in the first batch of kids, very small batch of students, 1922 onwards. So when the school had just barely gotten off the ground there, one day they suddenly saw at the gate a rickshaw pull up and Swami Subhudan and they get down from the rickshaw. Nobody knew he was coming and it's a big deal for a disciple of Sri Ramakrishna to come and visit. He came in and they, all the monks were called, they rushed up to him, you can imagine. And then he said, call this boy, there's such and such boy, he gave a description. And they did find such a boy, a schoolboy, in the hostel, they called him. He said, I'm here to initiate you. And he gave him mantra diksha, initiation. And then he got on the rickshaw and went away again. And the story was, he later explained, he was in some nearby town. And he was taking his uh, uh, customary afternoon siesta. And he had a vision of Sri Ramakrishna telling him, get up, pushing him, get up, go there, go to that, that, that ashram. And in there you will find such and such boy. He is my devotee, initiate him. Of course the boy knew nothing about it. <laughs> and Subhadranji ignored it. He thought it was just a dream. Went back to sleep. Three times it happened. He felt Sri Ramakrishna pushing him, get up, go. And then he did that. So many interesting stories. <laughs> All right. In the 11th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, where we are, this is the, called the Vishwarupa Darshana, the vision of the cosmic form. This chapter is different from all the others. All the others, except the first one. First one is where the stage is set. Arjuna's problems, his depression. It's literally called Depression Yoga. Vishada Yoga, the yoga of depression, which is important because they must be depressed about the, the world and its condition, its prospects. Then only you look for something beyond this world. Now, after that, the rest of the book, Bhagavad Gita, 18 chapters, from chapter 2 onwards till the end, is teaching. Arjuna asks questions and Krishna replies and teaches him Vedanta, except the 11th chapter. The bulk of the 11th chapter is actually a description of a mystic experience, an awesome mystic experience. Arjuna wanted to know, wanted to see. He said, I believe that you are God. I believe what you are saying, that you are an incarnation of God. I believe you. But I want to see, because what I'm seeing, actually seeing, is this person whom I've always known. All from my childhood I've known you. Is my chauffeur, chariot driver. <laughs> That's what I'm seeing. I believe you, but I want to see. Uh, and then Krishna gives him this stunning vision. One of the rarest sequences in world poetry. Where they have tried their best to impress upon us, the reader. What would it be like to actually have, have this vision of God? It's a vision. It's not literally seeing with eyes, by the way. Because uh, nobody else sees it. Only Arjuna sees it. And Krishna says, I'm going to give you the divya chakshu, the divine vision. Divya, divine eyes by which you will see. You can't see it with these eyes. But still, what is it like to have that kind of an experience? Because that is put in stirring poetry. I mentioned how Oppenheimer seeing the first atom bomb explosion, he recited from here, I come time, I am become time, the destroyer of worlds. Also that description of it's like a thousand suns rising simultaneously in the sky. 
the radiance. Imagine the radiance of one sun. Imagine the radiance of two or a ten suns or a hundred, a thousand suns. Yet it's a benign radiance. It doesn't burn you up in a trice. So that description is going on. Arjuna asked for it, but the result was he was terrified. He was terrified. And that often happens. It's a genuine mystical experience. It's what Americans would call mind-blowing. <laughs> so he was terrified. And the description is mostly what he saw, his reactions. Then he speaks to this cosmic being. And then this cosmic being, Vishwarupa, the cosmic being of God, uh, tells Arjuna that whatever has to be done in life has already been done. Last time we saw this. Uh, the 33rd verse. Last time we were on the 33rd verse. What uh, he says, Mayeva nihata purva meva. All these enemies of yours have been vanquished by, by me from the beginning itself. What you do does not matter one bit. That can be <laughs> disappointing. That there's a divine purpose to this universe and it will be accomplished. We, whether, if, we, if we cooperate with it, you are blessed. If we do not cooperate with it, we will suffer. But the destiny of the universe, none can stop it. So the, the Lord says, you surrender to, to me. Be a nimitta matram bhava. Be, the, be an instrument in the hands of the divine. Surrender to the divine. Let the divine work through you. Last time we discussed, we had a little discussion about free will. How there is really no free will. How um, there seems to be free will. And what do you do then? And uh, Krishna is very clear. Get up and do what is in front of you. Not because uh, it's your will, it is my will, but because you will get, you will benefit. You will, you will, the divine will work through you, and your benefit will be your spiritual growth and freedom ultimately. So the real benefit is the spiritual benefit, not a monetary benefit, not even the kingdom which he expects. All of that will come. He will get the kingdom too. But that will also go away one day. Nothing here, no benefit here, no gain here is permanent. No loss here is permanent either. The real gain is our spiritual gain. That is 33rd verse. Now 34. Who is speaking? Krishna is speaking. The Vishwarup, the cosmic, cosmic being is speaking to Arjuna. Who is trembling in his boots or sandals, whatever. Number 34. Dronam cha bhishmam cha jayadratam cha Dronam cha bhishmam cha jayadratam cha Karnam tathanyan api yodhaviran Karnam tathanyan api yodhaviran Maya hatan stvang jahima vyatishtha Maya hatan stvang jahima vyatishtha Yudhyasva jeta sirane sapatnan. Yudhyasva jeta sirane sapatnan. Kill Drona, Bhishma, Jayadratha, Karna, as also other great warriors who are already killed by me. Be not distressed. Fight. You will conquer your enemies in battle. The commentator, I'm using Sridhar Swami's commentary here. He says, this is actually an answer to one of the questions which Arjun had asked at the beginning of the Gita, in the first and the second chapters. The commentator says, Nachaitad vidma kataran no gari ityadi ya shanka saapi na katta karyet ityaha. Saapi na karya ityaha. The doubts which you had long back, second chapter, first chapter, you may have forgotten. People ask long questions and they forget. But Krishna did, does, has not forgotten. He is now giving that answer through that cosmic being. You had asked me, I don't understand what is good for me here. Should I fight this battle? Or should I not? If I fight this battle, I am going to fight against people who are dear to me. My own cousins. And more so, my teachers. The, the, the revered grandsire Bhishma. My teachers, Dronacharya, Kripacharya and others. It doesn't seem right. And yet... We know we are on the, on the side of dharma, on the side of right, righteousness. And these are unrighteous and our duty is to fight against for, fight for dharma against unrighteousness. So, but I, then I don't know what to do. So this is what you had asked, this doubt. Well, that doubt should not come to you because he says, he's very clear. Go ahead and fight this battle and do your duty. 
In any case, it's been done by me. Having said this, now remember this whole thing is a narrative. Sanjay is narrating what's going on in the battlefield of Mahabharata to the blind king Dhritarashtra. So now the scene shifts back. It's all you know, from the studio to the live telecast and there's, <laughs> there's, a, there's a reporter on the field uh, and there is this Sanjay who is in the uh, broadcast studio. So now Sanjay Vacha, number 35. Sanjay Vacha, Sanjay Vacha, Etat Shutva Vachanam Keshavasya, Etat Shutva Vachanam Keshavasya, Kritanjali Vepamana Kiriti, Kritanjali Vepamana Kiriti, Namaskritva Bhuya Evaha Krishnam, Namaskritva Bhuya Evaha Krishnam, Sagad Gadam Bhita Bhita Pranamya, Sagad Gadam Bhita Bhita Pranamya. Sanjay said, Hearing these words of Keshava or Krishna, the trembling Arjuna saluted with folded palms and said again to Krishna in faltering accents, bowing down and in great fear. This is the response to the, to the presence of God, our initial response. If you are faced with divinity, can you all hear me in the back also? Yes. So if you are faced with this divinity, our response, this is very natural. We are first response is we are overcome with awe. Not a theory anymore, but a tremendous presence. The most extraordinary experience, most intense experience by far in our lives. And our reaction will be folded hands, falling flat on the ground, bowing down, and his voice trembling. He says, the, the commentator says, Bhaya harshad deaveshad. It's not just fear, it's elation because it's an extraordinary thing. Yeah. By seeing that, life is fulfilled. I realize that nothing ever, ever again in life will match this. This is the greatest thing ever. My life is fulfilled. I'm seeing this, although I'm terrified. So, fear and elation. Overcome by both, Gadgade in a Kantha Kampane in a with trembling voice, choked up, Arjuna speaks. One of our Swami, Swami Yatishwarananda, he was a vice president of our order. So, in a book, he has given, see, how we experience God. So, he draws the stick figures. One is the stick figure with a big question mark. Does God exist? I don't know. It's sort of cool not to believe in God and things like that. You know? That's the initial stage most people are agnostic then the next stage comes if we are lucky if we are lucky we go to that stage when we actually god is a real presence in our life so he draws that stick figure of a man and there's a big circle in the sky above him so god is a reality there's no doubt that god exists then the third figure he draws is a little stick figure of the man is enclosed in that big circle now he's immersed in god it's not a separate presence anymore Everywhere. Arjuna got a bit of that. Arjuna's um, experience is the second one. That he is seeing, he is feeling the presence of God. But has something separate from it. Encompassing everything. But then he will say that I feel you everywhere. Above me, below me, in front of me, on my sides, behind me. I am surrounded by that divinity. An all-encompassing divinity. So that's the third stage where you feel engulfed by that divinity. Arjuna says you are a mass of light everywhere. And then the last one, Swami Yatishwanta draws, the stick figure has disappeared into an outline and it's only that which remains. So that's an Advaitic, non-dual experience of one reality. So there's a second one is a dualistic experience. First one is agnostic. I don't know. I may believe, but it's not a reality for me. Second one is, it's a reality for me. The blessed ones will feel the presence of God. But it's a dualistic reality. I and God are separate, but God is real. The third one is, I and God are not separate. I am immersed in God. I am a part of the, of the divinity. And the fourth one is, only the divinity. Mm. Not me anymore. 
remember this is from the all of it all four are from a devotional perspective not from a perspective of knowledge of i am brahman nothing like that it's just being more and more overwhelmed by god and your own personality becoming less and less until it fades away into so it's you are not becoming less you are basically becoming the infinite it's like a drop of water they say falling into the ocean so arjuna bows down his hands folded that is the natural reaction then what does he say bowing down with hands folded what does he say to that divinity 36 onwards 11 verses will go on like this arjuna vacha arjuna vacha sthane rishikesha tava prakirtya sthane rishikesha tava prakirtya jagat prahrishyatyanurajyate cha jagat prahrishyatyanurajyate cha rakshaangshi bhitani disho dravanti rakshaangshi bhitani disho dravanti sarve namasyanti cha siddha sangha sarve namasyanti cha siddha sangha it is proper o rishikesha krishna that by your glorification the world gets delighted and attracted towards you the demons get frightened and run in all directions and the hosts of perfected beings bow down to you the whole world is delighted by when we are immersed in god when we are in the presence of god when we praise god you are delighted when you praise god out of all reverence and delight you praise god but that praising of god delights the world around you and evil is dispelled by this radiance in your life and everywhere else and the perfected beings that means the enlightened ones they're all bowing down to you this is what he's he's saying it is not that it should be like this he's saying this is what's going on all the time right now also it's going on divinity the moment we recognize the divinity you will feel sublime purified uplifted wherever you are whichever religion you belong to whatever the moment of your transcendence you will feel it that way and you will feel that radiance actually is there in this universe and delights everyone every everywhere evil is dispelled by that and there are those saints those enlightened beings who are continuously bowing down who are in that this what arjuna experiences just now the enlightened ones experience all the time and their minds don't get blown by it <laughs> so they they are all all the time uh, tuned to that divinity so they are always in that state of reverence and continuous prayer automatically that's their natural state it's a very high elevated state siddha sangha are the hosts of divine beings and there are these pesky little demons who run helter skelter they do, they can't stand the radiance and all other living beings are exalted by the presence of this divinity he says prakritya that means the com- commentator says mahatmya sankirtanena by the praising of the glory of god when we turn away it's an interesting thing when we turn away from the world and face god we like to think about god not the world we like to praise god not the world we like to see god not the world we meditate on god we chant for god we meditate on the form of god we worship god ritualistically mentally uh, we serve god in all beings we read about the the and this is devotion bhakti so the leela the divine play of krishna and other avatars and so on we sing and dance in the name of god this turning away from the world and turning towards god this delights the world one sadhu pointed it out ramsuk das ji he pointed it out if you turn away from the world and you face god this delights the world and if you turn towards the world and engage in the world you will immediately run into friction with the world you will be competing for what the worldly people want pleasure money resources you're running the same rat race immediately you'll be recognized as a rat <laughs> we have a rat problem in new york here But the moment you turn away from the world, the world is happy with you. That's how how interesting it is. Eventually, if it's sincerely you turn away from the world towards God, the world is happy with you. I remember this monk who was a great teacher in 
50s, 60s, one of his letters he writes, he was in Banaras, he writes in Hindi, but I'll tell you what he writes. Somebody had written to him, a devotee, that Swami, I hope you are, I mean, we are your disciples, you are our guru, uh, I hope and pray you are thinking of us. And that Swami wrote back harshly. He says, religion is destroyed by the gurus who think of their disi disciples. What kind of guru do you want? Do you want a guru who thinks of God or of you? <laughs> it is the duty of God to think of us. It is our duty to think of God. Yes, the incarnation of God, Krishna, Rama, Ramakrishna, they will think about us. But our duty is to think about them, not about the world. See, the world is happy when you think about God. If you do not think about God, especially if you are a spiritual seeker, Praising God, and it is um, the hosts, the, the commentator here says, the hosts of perfected beings are always bowing down, always tuned to God. Very beautiful commentary has given. Yoga tapo mantra di siddhanam sangaha namasyanti pranamanti. The hosts of the siddha, siddhas are spiritually perfect beings. How did they become spiritually perfect? By yoga, various kinds of spiritual pursuits. Tapa, by austerity, by mantra, repeating a mantra. So in various ways, all these beings have become perfected. And now what do they do? They perpetually stand and praise the Lord. <laughs> it's kind of boring. <laughs> no, it isn't. It isn't. Imagine the most fulfilled that we have been ever in life, whether in a worldly sense or a spiritual sense. And imagine being that without limit forever. So, not, not by our own grace or capacity, by the presence of the Lord, by the presence of God. So, um, I'm reminded of Swami Abhedanandaji. Uh, he, Kali Prasad, he was a young boy who wanted to learn yoga. And somebody told him, why don't you go to the Dakshineshwar, the, the Paramahams of Dakshineshwar. He has attained Samadhi, the highest state of yoga. He can teach you maybe. And so, he turned up. Sri Ramakrishna and became a disciple of Sri Ramakrishna and Sri Ramakrishna actually taught him and uh, Kali would go back to his house and meditate young teenage boy but very uh, very spiritually advanced and special for us because he was here for 20 years in the Vedanta Society of New York for more than 20 years yeah. so um, now when he would have some extraordinary mystical experiences he would come Sri Ramakrishna would ask uh, what did you see? What was your meditation like? And he would narrate it to Sri Ramakrishna. And Sri Ramakrishna would give him further instructions. One day he comes to Sri Ramakrishna and says, I had this uh, extraordinary samadhi which I have never had earlier. And I got a vision of hosts of perfected beings, sages, and also various forms of gods and goddesses which are worshipped in Hinduism, Buddhism also, in the Mahayana Buddhism. They're all standing around a central, like, like a luminous uh, being, and they're praising with hands, hands uh, folded. And that central, that luminous being was you, he, he told Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna was very pleased. He was not taken aback. He was very pleased and he said, uh, you have attained the darshan of Vaikuntha. This is Vaikuntha darshana. Vaikuntha is the abode of Vishnu. So Vishnu is surrounded by all uh, perfected beings. And then he said, you will not have Visions with form anymore. And that means you have gone to the realm of the non-dual. This is the, your final vision with, with form. So th that reminded me when, when uh, the commentator is saying, Yoga tapo mantra di siddhanam sangha. The hosts of beings perfected by yoga, by tapasya, by austerity, by mantra. They all stand around the Lord, in the presence of the Lord, and uh, full of bliss and praise. Number 37. This is uh, Arjuna is saying this. Kasma chate na nameran mahatman Kasma chate na nameran mahatman Gariya se brahmano apyadi katre Gariya se brahmano apyadi katre Ananta devesha jagani vasa Ananta devesha jagani vasa Tvamaksharam sadasat 
परम यत त्वमक्षरम सदसत परम यत एंड व्हाई शुड दे नॉट ओ नोबल सोल सल्यूट यू द ओरिजिनल एजेंट हु आर ग्रेटर देन एजेंट साउंड्स लाइक एफबीआई बट ओरिजिनल डूअर द सोर्स ऑफ ऑल एक्शन डूअर ऑफ ऑल एक्शंस हु आर ग्रेटर देन इवन ब्रह्मा O infinite being O ruler of the gods O abode of the world you are the imperishable the manifest and the unmanifest and that which is beyond both The commentator says hey mahatman hey ananta so o o, o great one ananta o limitless one hey devesha o lord of the god of the gods hey jagannivas o abode of the worlds abode of the worlds what what beautiful language ब्रह्मणो अभी गरीयसे गुरुतराय यू आर ग्रेटर देन ब्रह्मा आदि कर्त्रे यू आर दि फर्स्ट द सोर्स ऑफ ऑल एक्टिविटी इन द यूनिवर्स द फर्स्ट डूअर द प्राइमर डूअर प्राइमरी डूअर ब्रह्मणो अभी जनकाय बिकॉज यू आर द क्रिएटर ऑफ ब्रह्मा यू नो द आइकोनोग्राफी ऑफ विष्णु ऑन हिज लाइंग डाउन ऑन हिज प्रिमेवल काउच द थाउजेंड हेडेड सर्पेंट and the lotus blooming in his navel and brahma appearing there so this uh, basically this shows the idea of how creation happens sat vyaktam that which is manifest asad abhyaktam that which is unmanifest tabhyam param that which is beyond both the manifest and the unmanifest mula karanam the source of all yad aksharam brahma that that brahman which is akshara tat cha tvameva that also you are for these reasons why should they not praise you for so the, these reasons that's why they all the perfected beings praise you gariyase see in the indian tradition gariyase means um, superior to all um, greater than all guru means teacher uh, heavy deep so in indian tradition we bow down to whom the question is why are they all bowing down to you so whom do we bow down to first is of course from whom we learn whether it's spiritual knowledge or worldly knowledge the guru the teacher who else do we bow down to we bow down to um our parents for example grandparents the source from which we have come in this worldly life itself and who else do we bow down to somebody we consider to be superior it could be somebody is older than us somebody is um, uh, greater than us in knowledge or in virtue or some kind of greatness so we bow down to these uh, and the greatest of all of them in all these ways as the first of the gurus who is the first guru who gives spiritual knowledge to all purvesham api guru patanjali yoga sutra says of the greatest of gurus the the first guru is god ishwar so he is the guru of all the gurus the source of all spiritual knowledge munda kopanishad we are studying so there it says sa brahma vidya sarva vidya pratishtham atharvaya jeshta putraya praha having created the universe um, god gives this knowledge to brahma and then brahma transfers this knowledge to the great sages so the guru of gurus therefore gariya say who is greater than all and uh, and like our parents grandparents of all parents grandparents the source of everything in this universe we come from that brahma actually is the creator of all but he is the creator of brahma so, so brahman brahman brahma and brahma are two, two different they're very close names but brahma is a god a god who comes and goes with every universe but brahman ishwara bhagavan the god with capital g that never comes and goes that is that's eternal then brahmano api adi kartre you are greater than brahma because you are before brahma from you brahma has come and you are the first doer you are the, the source of all action ananta you are not limited by time space and uh, object you are eternal there's never a time when you were not there will never will be a time when you will not be um you are not limited by space wherever wherever there is space wherever there there is something there you are you pervade everywhere which basically means time and space appear after you you transcend time and space then object whatever exists in the universe material ob- objects living beings sentient beings 
gods and demons and human beings and animals and plants everything is pervaded by you they do not exist a- apart from you so they do not constitute a limit to you limit means i am up to here and then beyond this this object starts this object limits me because i am not it this is not me but god is not like that no object in this universe limits god they are all nothing but that divinity um so that is ananta limitless you are limitless devesha devesha means isha lord of all the gods normally it ap- applies to the king of the gods indra but here it means the gods with small g they are all beings they are all superior beings but they are beings they are not god with capital g but you are that god with capital g you are the lord of all these other gods jagan nivasa what a beautiful word jagan nivasa means you are the abode of the worlds the entire universe resides in you you are that from which the universe arises you are that in which the universe resides you are that into which the universe disappears finally at the end of the at the end of the universe he said earlier loka kshaya pravridha i come destroyer of worlds if you literally translate it i am the decay of the worlds as the worlds spin down to nothing nothingness i am that um it's like from from what have the waves come from the water in the ocean where do the waves exist in the ocean where do they finally disappear back into the ocean so this is the ocean of being of existence into from which the worlds have come in which they exist and into which they will disappear again but it will never disappear you are that abode of the worlds tvam aksharam so this aksharam literally means the undecaying that which never undergoes decay never undergoes change the permanent the eternal beyond time space and causation in the mundak upanishad also it was said when uh, the student asks the teacher tell me that teach me that by knowing which i'll know everything and the teacher replied that there are two kinds of knowing one is that knowledge by, by which you know everything all the in, in the world and that knowledge by which you know the akshara the undecaying the eternal and that's the one thing by which doing which you'll know everything here so he says you are that akshara and then what else sadasat you are the so sat and asat literally if you translate it means the real and the unreal existing and non-existing but in advaita there are different meanings in advaita and vishishta advaita in advaita vedanta sat means that which is with form so all of these what you can see hear smell taste touch these are all sat and asat means the formless one of the upanishads uses the term murta 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 brahma murta brahma murta with form a murta without form so for example here everything is physical but then there is something which is subtle our own thoughts feelings nobody can see them see hear smell taste touch they will not come up in the um, most powerful fmri scans whatever you get in the instrumental scans is um, murta is it with form but the first person experience we are all having that is formless both formless and with form you are and you are that which is beyond both of them param which transcends them you are the immanent and you are the transcendent vivekananda would say we hindus worship a transcendent immanent god a god who is beyond time space and causation beyond the universe but also in and through this universe here and everywhere now and all the time in this and that and in everything in hindi i'll tell you and then translate yahan aur wahan ab aur tab yah aur wah jisme bhasta hai sphurta hai aata aur jata hai wo brahm hai here and there space now and then then now and then time this and that object that in which all of these appear exist shine and disappear that is brahman what is that that is being itself or consciousness itself consciousness in the sense of pure consciousness not the relative consciousness which we are using right now you are that he says and hence why should they not praise you that's why they are praising you and he goes on arjuna tomadi deva purusha purana tomadi deva purusha purana tvamasya vishvasya param nidhanam 
परम निधानम वेत्तासि वेद्यम च परं च धाम वेत्तासि वेद्यम च परं च धाम त्वया ततम विश्वमनंत रूप त्वया ततम विश्वमनंत रूप यू आर द प्रिमेबल गॉड द एंशियन बीइंग यू आर द सुप्रीम रिपोजिटरी ऑफ दिस यूनिवर्स यू आर द नोअर एंड द नोएबल एंड द हाईएस्ट अबोड ओ यू ऑफ इंफिनिट फॉर्म by you is this universe pervaded tumadi deva you are the beginning of all the gods even the gods do not know your source but you know them all purusha the word purusha is a very ancient word for divinity we is not male or female here it's all of us our real nature is this purusha what is this purusha two meanings one is um purna purusha that which fills everything in the universe all time space and all objects so that is brahman another one is purishayanath that which resides in this city of nine gates in the body so the individual sentient being what we truly are and the reality of this universe this is purusha in one word both are meant here then purana pura api nava the ancient one which is always new how can an ancient one be always new it's because it's actually beyond time yeah. it's not that something it started long ago so it's very old is god very old well in a sense yes but all the time new so god is actually beyond time purana and then tvamasya vishvasya param nidhanam this is the same idea which was discussed earlier you are the ground of this universe the transcendent ground of this transcendent immanent pa- param means transcendent transcendent immanent ground of this universe that from which the universe appears exists and disappears and yet that which is not affected by this universe see this wood and table the table has come from the wood but you can't say that the wood is unaffected by what you do to the table if i scratch the table the wood is scratched it's basically the wood that i'm scratching if you hurt the world is god hurt in one sense no because god is transcendent beyond all this is beyond the impurities of this universe and that's good because that's our safety vetasi vedyam cha knowledge and you are that by which all knowledge is possible you are consciousness vetta the knower what is the knower consciousness the all conscious beings are the knower no there's only one consciousness which is krishna says in the 13th chapter he will say i am the one consciousness in all conscious beings kshetragyam chaapi maam vidhi sarva kshetreshu bharata i am the one consciousness in all i am the one knower of the field in all fields so i am the knower so we are all knowers no we are we are all knowers because of that one consciousness and the knowable whatever you can see hear smell taste touch whatever you can learn in science and religion whatever there is to know i am that also or uh, arjuna is saying to krishna you are that also the knower and the no- uh, knowable another meaning of the knowable would be that which is to be known in life which is god so in that sense you are the knowable you are that which is to be realized what we are seeking in life is you are that param chadhama you are the ultimate abode So Krishna has said in the Gita and Upanishads it again and again said there is something going to which you never return again. So that doesn't sound good. Sounds faintly ominous. No, this coming and going is what is ominous. We are being whirled around in a uh, wheel of torture from lifetime. This is the old Indian idea of multiple lifetimes. All Indian religions share this. All schools of Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, Sikhism. So we are being whirled around. and until you find god until you realize your true nature this suffering will go on this limited existence you are that by realizing which we are freed so what is called moksha freedom mukti freedom nirvana kaivalya apavarga many many ancient words in indian um, thought that was the project of the ancient indians it has been the project of india all throughout the ages the ultimate purpose of all of this is there a purpose can we attain it and have people actually attained it and the answer to all of them is yes yes and yes 
Where is this amazing being? Tvaya tatam idam vishwam. You are here, you pervade this idam, idam vishwam, this world which we are inhabiting. This awful world, Krishna, Arjuna says, this world of the, the, the battlefield, you're right here before me. In this battlefield, this most awful place, you're right here. You pervade everything here. I don't, we don't see it. Everybody sees all the other people, they're seeing soldiers and chariots and elephants and horses, sky and the earth, the battlefield. But Arjuna, thanks to the divine insight, sees the whole thing permeated by God. How are you permeating everything? Ananta Rupa, in limitless forms. In all these soldiers, in all these chariots and elephants and horses, in all the earth and the sky, everything, every dust of um, particle of dust in this battlefield, you permeate everything. You are appearing as all of these. What a vision! Number 39. Vayuryamo Agnir Varuna Shashanka Vayuryamo Agnir Varuna Shashanka Prajapati Stvam Prapita Mahascha Prajapati Stvam Prapita Mahascha Namo Namaste Stu Sahasra Kritva Namo Namaste Stu Sahasra Kritva Punascha bhuyo pinamo namaste. Punascha bhuyo pinamo namaste. You are the wind god. So you are all the gods, the gods which are, the, you know, in Indian, um, in Hinduism, and also Buddhism, Jainism, they find their place. So these minor deities, all of them, you are all of them. You are the wind god, the death, god, god of death, fire, the sea god, the moon, Prajapati, it is Brahma. And also the great grandsire. You're the, so you are the great grandfather of the universe. Salutations, a thousandfold salutation to you. Salutations again and again to you. Salutations. Number 40. So, very, he is in an ecstatic mood. Number 40. Nama Purastadatha Prishtataste Nama Purastadatha Prishtataste Namostu te sarvataeva sarva Namostu te sarvataeva sarva Ananta virya mita vikramastvam Ananta virya mita vikramastvam Sarvam samapno shitato si sarva Sarvam samapno shitato si sarva O oh, all, salutations in front and from behind, salutations to you all around. You are of infinite prowess, of immeasurable valor. You pervade everything and so you are everything. Namah Purastat, Prishtadaste, in front and in the back and all around, Sarvata, surrounding me up and down in all the directions. This one divinity and of what power, limitless power and limitless prowess and valor. Um, this valor reminds me in another minor t- uh, tone there was this monk in uh, in Haridwar he was known as Bhikshu Shankarananda a very interesting monk I never saw him but one of our monks saw him and I wrote a little bit about him I read that so he was a strict non-dualist and he had no possessions whatsoever didn't even have a cottage. He lived under a tree on, you know what a charpoy is? Uh, like a cot made of uh, wood and fiber. So he lived on that. And he, had, uh, he just had his loincloth and he lived there. But he was regarded as a very great monk and a lot of people came to meet him and take his blessings and his advice. And he was a strict non-dualist. So, I'll tell you in Hindi what he would say then translate. Ye mere gunda thakur hai. My, my lord is it only how do you translate gunda is a is a thug <laughs> he's a thug <laughs> uh, he does what he wants this entire universe this is limitless there is no limit to, to what that lord will do but uh, thug in, a, in an endearing way he's like the l- l- local hoodlum <laughs> the s- local strong arm man so he, he he does what he wants 
somebody asked him that, Swami, you are a non-dualist, you know, Advaitin. Where are your books? The non-dualists are supposed to have lots of books. You know, they're always reading books and arguing and all. He had no books at all. Where are your books? Don't you read books? And this, the monk said, oh, I do. I have three books and I read them every day. They are called Waking, Dreaming and Deep Sleep. <laughs> I read them every day and, and find the Lord, the one Lord, this thug who, <laughs> uh, who limitlessly, without any limit, what, that there is no limit in space, time or in action, what the Lord can do or cannot do. There is no limit. Amita Vikram, of, of unlimited power and valor. You pervade all, you are all. Then uh, next. Now he asks for forgiveness. 41 and 42 together. Saketi matva prasabham yaduktam Saketi matva prasabham yaduktam He Krishna, he yadava, he saketi He Krishna, he yadava, he saketi Ajanata mahimanam tavedam Ajanata mahimanam tavedam Maya pramadat pranayena vapi Maya pramadat pranaye navapi Yachavahas avahasatham asat kritosi Yachavahasatham asat kritosi Vihara shaya sanabhojaneshu Vihara shaya sanabhojaneshu Eko tavapyachuta tat samaksham Eko thava pyachuta tat samaksham tat shamaye twamaham aprameyam tat shamaye twamaham aprameyam. So Arjuna says, suddenly is overwhelmed by the realization that Krishna, who was so dear to me, my friend, with whom I've just behaved like he's my buddy, you know, a very dear friend, but now I realize who or what he is. Whatever I, not knowing the greatness and this form of yours, may have said to you importunately or impertinently, out of ignorance or of affection, addressing you as, O Krishna, O Yadava, O friend, regarding you as my friend, and in whatever way you have been slighted, out of fun, at sport, you know, relaxing on, in bed, on the seat, or the, while eating, either alone, or in company, all that, O oh Achyuta, I entreat you, the incomprehensible one, to forgive. So the commentator says, Tava Mahimanam Idam, this extraordinary glory of yours, Vishwarupam, the cosmic form, Ajanata Amaya, not being known by me, I, the one who did not know, Pramadat, in, by mistake, Pranayena, out of affection, out of affection, Snehena, out of love, Yaduktam, whatever I have said or done, please forgive me. Tat sarvam aparadha jatam, that entire mass of offenses committed by me. Tvam aprameyam, you who are incomprehensibly far beyond our knowledge, achintya prabhavam, kshamaye, kshamam karayami. So I... I I pray to you to persuade you to forgive me. This is another theme in bhakti. You will notice you're overwhelmed, first of all, scared, then overjoyed. This is extraordinary. Then you become aware of your, oh my God, what have I done? Then you immediately are full of repentance and, and uh, uh, seeking forgiveness. You, one becomes aware of one's smallness, one's pettiness, one li one's littleness in front of this extraordinary vastness. One immediately becomes um, repentant. Here Arjuna, of course, out of friendship, 
that also is repentant but we may have committed offenses in many many ways in many ways so this is another movement in the heart of a lover of god a bhakta who feels suddenly overwhelmed by repentance over a uh, kind of um, kind of spiritual shame let us say in front of this greatness and asks for forgiveness in many of the mantras in pujas at the end of the puja there will be a hymn asking for forgiveness of the lord in number 43 ोकस्यचराचरस्यतमस्यपूज्यस्यगुरुर्गरीयान्तमस्यपूज्यस्यगुरुर्गरीयान्तमस्यपूज्यस्यगुरुर्गरीयान्तमस्यपूज्यस्
proceed a devesha jagannivasa o lord seeing what has never been seen before i am overjoyed but my mind is extremely agitated through fear show me that very old form o god of gods o abode of the universe be gracious now another movement see he wanted to see this this form which he's seeing but it scared him it terrified him and he can't bear it anymore now he's saying reverse take it back i can't bear it anymore show me your old human form again i want to see you as i always saw you so this is the next movement number 46 kiritinam gadinam chakrahastam kiritinam gadinam chakrahastam ichchami tvam drashtum aham tathaiva ichchami tvam drashtum aham tathaiva tenaiva rupena chaturbhujena tenaiv rupena chaturbhujena sahasra baho bhava vishva murte sahasra baho bhava vishva murte i would like to see you as before with diadem bearing a mace and disc in your hands assume that very form with four arms o thousand armed one o you of universal form i'm skipping over this but any close reader will immediately say just a minute Did he see, Arjuna always saw Krishna with four arms? <laughs> so that's a divine form, right? And that's a mystery in the Gita. Nobody has been adequately able to explain. <laughs> Because all the pictures you see Krishna with two arms, look like any other human being. So what does he mean? I want to see you as before with four arms or oh, thousand arms. Thousand arms one is fine. That we are seeing that. But what does that mean? Um we'll stop here. Because then krishna will respond he will reassume he assume his old human form that awesome vision will disappear forever from arjuna and uh, then towards the ve- the very end of this uh, chapter he will give a very profound instruction on devotion love of god which will be a segue into the 12th chapter which is called bhakti yoga the yoga of love remember the section we are reading now bhagavad gita has 18 chapters and it can be divided it has been divided by some acharyas into three sections of six chapters each chapters 1 to 6 7 to 12 and then uh, from 13 to 18 on what basis um the great saying that thou art tatvamasi you are that so the first six chapters is an analysis of you what we are the next six chapters from chapter 7 to 12 is god that and then the next six chapters from 13 to 18 is the realization of this identity the practices and the final realization of that again very broad kind of division but there's some truth to it you will notice the first six chapters were mostly meditation i am the atman all of that karma yoga for purification so and so forth although there were other things also incarnation of god avatar also was declared there and so on but the this these chapters which you have been studying from 7th onwards are mostly devotional and here this is very devotional what he's arjuna is saying now and the 12th chapter will be the acme of it the, the chapter on the yoga of devotion yoga of love so we are on, almost about to enter that 12th chapter uh, which is where krishna teaches how how to love god the path of yoga no uh, bhakti yoga if there's any question any observation otherwise we'll wrap it up all right michael oh, just a minute he's going to give you a microphone thank you so much you mentioned earlier that one should focus on god and not the world mm. um but once you start realizing that all is brahman yes. that the world and god is kind of just one uh what are your thoughts on then engaging with the world with those eyes Yes so that would be the goal actually that's what krishna is actually teaching arjuna if you say just focus on god turn away from the world arjuna will say that's what i'm trying to say i want to do that you're not letting me do it you keep telling me fight this battle this is the then uh, the higher teaching is if you still think that you have turned away from god and you are facing uh, turned away from the world and you're facing god then your idea of god is a little limited because that's not god this is god but initially one must do something like that uh, one must focus and that focus on god 
whether it's in devotion or in meditation, even in service. See, the idea of karma yoga is actually turning away from worldly pursuits, worldly goals in work and pursuit towards uh, spirituality in work. It, it's subtle because you're still doing the same thing. He's the same uh, warrior fighting the same bad guys, but his attitude has completely changed. What's the worldly attitude? Good worldly attitude. The people who have come to the battlefield have come for worldly reasons. The bad guys have come for bad reasons and the good guys have come for good reasons. But both are worldly reasons. The bad worldly reasons are, I want to snatch away the kingdom and I want to wipe you out. And, uh, it's a battle for power and wealth and all that. The bad guys, the Kauravas. The good guys, the Pandavas, they are here on the side of dharma, on righteousness. You, they are doing the duty you know, to punish the evil, make sure that morality wins and all of that. Still, the goal is, the kingdom which is rightfully ours, we'll, we'll uh, take that. And we'll punish the evildoers, the criminals. But that's also a worldly goal. And at one point you might tire of it. You might say, I don't want it. I, I, don't you want to be rich and successful and powerful and rule this kingdom? No. And I see the cost at which it is coming. Let them have it. I don't care. Uh, so that attitude may come. And what do you want? Krishna teaches him Vedanta. That this body and mind, are, it's not your real nature. There is a spiritual nature. To realize that spiritual nature is the goal. God does exist. So that's the goal. God realization, self-realization, whatever you call it, that's the goal. Even then one might think, good, I fully, I'll sign up for that. I am not going to do this thing. But then what is that God? Then you realize that God is here too. Whatever you thought was the world is that same divinity. And then one, one major road of spiritual practice would be to engage with the world. With, but your goal now is God realization. So in one sense you have actually turned away from the world without actually physically turning away from it. You are no longer pursuing the same goals which other people around you are pursuing, doing the same work. It can be difficult, but um, uh, yeah, that's the point. I remember um, in the Himalayas, which is full of monks, who for good or bad reasons have literally turned away from society. And they live there like hermits. I mean, not like hermits, as hermits. They are hermits. So one monk, who was a good for nothing, I mean, he wasn't doing much spiritual practice. He's just a kind of, um, there are many, many search of, a vagabond basically, but wearing the geruwa and, and he was unhappy. See, that doesn't lead to happiness. That's the interesting thing. He was unhappy. So he asked me for advice. And then he asked me, the reason he got some faith in me and some respect for me was when he asked me, so you are in the Ramakrishna mission, what do you do? I said, there's this college, so you teach there. I was actually the principal of the college. I said, I am the principal of the college. Now for him, it was stunning. Here is this monk just like me who was wandering in the mountains and begging for his food and uh, basically a beggar. But he's the principal of a college. And then he said, how much do they pay you? <laughs> I said, nothing. It's, it's our service. It's our worship. It's our karma yoga. And if you know anything about the Ramakrishna order, and there's a funny part of it. Um, he said, he hugged me and said, I'll tell you in Hindi and then translate. Are humse kya chipana bol de yaar. What's there to hide from me? Tell me. Why don't you tell me? Just tell me. And he hugged me. And then I said, but it's true. You ask anybody. Um, all the work that we do, whatever we do. We may be the head of a college. We may be, you know. Um, uh, teaching students, running a hospital, whatever we are doing. We, don't, we are not doing it for money at all. But that opened his eyes. So he got some respect. And he started asking me, what do I do? And, and I told him, but it didn't work. See, if, unless there's an initial course of discipline from the very beginning, when one becomes um, habituated to that, you know, I'm not involved with the world. And I don't have any particular desire to do any spiritual practice also. A kind of a useless uh, uh, wanderer. A, a laziness creeps into the, into the mind. So that's not at all good. That is tamasic. That's not uh, sattvic. I told him, why don't, there's a, there are classes on Vedanta. Why don't you come and sit and listen to the classes on Vedanta? There was a class on the Ashtavakra which was going on, which I used to attend. 
So in the next day he turned up, that monk, and he sat in a place where I could see him, made sure that I saw that he, uh, he was following my advice. But I noticed throughout the class, he was like this, you know, he was looking around and, you know, sort of playing around with his cloth and, uh, you know, like his uh, feet, <laughs> feet were shaking. He was sitting on, on the ground and looking around that way. If you, if you have not studied, if you have not done any spiritual practice, straight away you start listening to Ashtavakra, very soon it will make no sense at all. <laughs> What's going on here? He came once, he came twice, third time he didn't come and didn't even come to meet me. That's sad though. That's sad. So spiritualize your work, our work right here. Whatever you're doing, no longer for worldly goals, for the highest goal of God realization, but the same work. You can teach kids, you can be a filmmaker, you can uh, do whatever you're doing, as long as it's not outright unethical. I remember this person, uh, many years ago I met him. He was uh, a very high position, like a managing director or something in Johnson & Johnson Medical Products. So he said, look, I'm not a monk, nor am I really a spiritual seeker, but my I read Vivekananda every day. And he graduated from a top B school in India, business school, and then he got a job in a, a premier liquor company. And he was doing very well. And daily he said, I was to sit and read Vivekananda. One day it struck me, I can't do both. Either I have to stop reading Vivekananda or I have to change this job. <laughs> because I, it struck me very clearly. The entire, all my efforts, all day long, all my intelligence, hard work and passion is for making as many people drunk as much of the time as possible. <laughs> I said, I can't do that. And yet I don't want to become a monk. I don't want to uh, give up the world. I still want to be successful in this world. What do I do? And then he said, so let me use my talent and my energy and my intelligence for some product which is at least useful to society somewhere. And so he changed his jobs and he got a very good job elsewhere. But this is, see, how it affects. Uh, in the same, uh, this, this worldly sphere itself. But pick up some activity and move higher. Go from where we are to something better. Yes. Can you pass down that microphone? Oh, yeah. Uh, when Arjuna uses the words aksharam and param like beyond form and formless does it mean that he got the advaitic realization actually no uh, those words mm -hmm. have been used by Krishna himself earlier he is repeating back to Krishna what he has so he has understood it at least he has understood this and he has this tremendous insight into uh, what God is because he had this tremendous experience but he's not a fully enlightened person otherwise the next few chapters don't make any sense at all I mentioned that uh, in a Gita class uh, we were studying at the Harvard Divinity School and the professor said why is there a 12th chapter this 11 chapter is mind-blowing this is the climax of the whole book one of the most he said one of the most anticlimactic movements in world literature is the 12th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita why at all does it exist but if you look at the, the commentar commentators, the ancient and medieval commentators of the Bhagavad Gita, none of them seem to give much importance to the 11th chapter. They smoothly move on to the 12th chapter and discuss it very, very thoroughly. So this was an amazing experience which Arjuna had. But from an Advaitic perspective, he has to realize that I am Brahman. He had this wonderful vision. But now further. He has to do spiritual practices. Also another thing. This he got by the special gay grace of Krishna. It's not his own. When he says the perfected beings are praising you all the time. The perfected beings have made it their own. That's the level of their existence. This is not the level of Arjuna's existence. Otherwise it wouldn't have gone away. It was, it, he, got it, he didn't get it by his own effort. By the grace of God. And, and it also was withdrawn from him. And this you see actually in our day and time. Sri Ramakrishna's disciples. All of them got extraordinary visions and experiences by His grace. Now it was seen after the passing of Sri Ramakrishna, some of them, especially the monastic disciples and some of the householder disciples, um, like Master Mahashaya, like Nag Mahashaya, a few of them, they, they went on practicing spiritual disciplines intensively. Meditation, prayer, austerities, this one pointed, literally turning away from the world and the pursuit of God. And they were asked, 
I know at least Swami Brahmananda and Swami Shivananda, they were asked when they were meditating in mountains and forests, wandering unknown as begging monks and spending hours and days and weeks in study, meditation. What are you trying to do? Sri Ramakrishna, I understand what all the other monks are trying to do. But Sri Ramakrishna has already given you these experiences. And both of them answered, Brahmananda and Shivananda, I know this is recorded. Both of them answered, what he has given us, we are trying to make it our own. Suppose you don't. Suppose you don't try to make it your own, what will happen? All the other disciples who did not, those who did not try in that way, and they're all spiritually elevated people, but there were some who did not try. They got these experiences, they were devoted, Sri Ramakrishna passed on, and that's it. They went back to their um, families, their work, and life went on. What happened to them? There's a big difference. Their lives, and the lives of a, a few of the householder disciples, some of the women, Gulapma, uh, then, um, then Gopalirma, Gopalirma especially, um, and these monastic disciples, then uh, Girish Ghosh in his own way, unique way, uh, but also Master Mahasaya who wrote the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, Nag Mahasaya, very uh, sublime, elevated householder disciple. They remained focused on God. They became perfected beings. They radiated, they found, I mean, they became established in that God realization. The others, they were holy people. But they also, all of them went through uh, lots of ups and downs in samsara. You know, um, financial problems, health problems, maybe the illness and death of children, a lot of, lot of ups and downs. Whatever happens in samsara also happened to them and they suffered. Neither will, were they able to become like sources of spiritual comfort and light for others, nor were they able to. They did because of the blessings of Sri Ramakrishna. They were able to struggle, but not to the extent which you would have, uh, you know, which the others did. Then, what was the use of their having these experiences? The use is at the end, at the finally, at the point of death, they all attained liberation. Even there, Sri Ramakrishna says, if anybody had a strong worldly desire, they'll have to come back again. Yeah. All right. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Ramakrishna Rupanamastur